everybody, it's Mark from Ripple Training. So shot matching is a crucial part of the color grading process because it creates visual continuity. For example, you may have two different shots of the same subject at the same location in the same time of day, maybe even with the same camera, but the camera's exposure or white balance changed so the shots don't match. Or you shot with multiple cameras and each camera, even though you match them, they might not have quite the same color science, so they don't look quite the same. Or you may want shots in different locations or different times of day to look as if they were all shot at the same time. In any of these cases, we can use the color grading tools in DaVinci Resolve to improve the consistency of tonality and color balance between shots in order to keep our viewers engaged in our visual storytelling. So today I'd like to share with you part of a lesson from our seven hour Black Magic Design certified advanced color grading in DaVinci Resolve 17 and 18 tutorial. It's currently on sale for 50% off. So if you've ever wanted to learn how to take advantage of the incredibly deep tool set in DaVinci Resolve's color page, there's never been a better time. Link in the description below. All right, let's dive in. I'm interested in these two shots, six and seven. They're both shots of our interview subject driving the tractor, but one was shot on the ground with a handheld camera and the other was shot with a drone and they have very different brightness and color balance. This is my reference shot that I want to match to. In the viewer, I'll right click and choose grab still. I'll open the gallery. Then I'll right click on that still and choose change label and give it a name. While we're here, let's close the timeline to give us a little bit more space. Now, I want to match this shot to our reference. Let's first add a new node with Option or Alt S. And then instead of naming it by right clicking and choosing Node Label, let's assign a keyboard shortcut. So I'll go to the DaVinci Resolve menu and choose Keyboard Customization. And we currently have the default DaVinci Resolve keyboard mapping selected. I'll search for the word Node, select All Commands, Open Nodes, and there's our command Label Selected Node. I'll double click in the shortcut field, and I know the Tab key isn't being used, so I'll press Tab, and then I'll click Save. Now we can't overwrite the current keyboard mapping, so we'll give a name to our new preset. Now with the node selected, I can press the tab key and simply start typing. Okay, now that we have our still created, if we double click that still, it enables the wipe mode, which is indicated by the highlight right here, image wipe. We can also toggle that on and off by clicking. The image wipe places our reference still next to our timeline shot that's selected. We can drag back and forth on the line between them to see different amounts of each shot. We can also switch to a horizontal wipe and move up and down. I'll go back to the vertical wipe. If you want to see the other side of each clip, you can swap them by pressing Option or Alt W. Now, it's difficult to compare these shots in the RGB parade because they're very different in composition. This shot is much wider and includes other elements not included in this shot but we can resize each of these shots in order to create a better comparison. I'll go to the sizing palette. I'll make sure input sizing is selected. That's the default. In Resolve 18, just like the other palettes, the sizing palette drop-down menu has been replaced with a set of icons and the name of the selected icon appears by the palette name on the left. Then I'll zoom up our wide shot, pan it over, and tilt it up so we can see most of the tractor in this shot. Then I'll switch to the reference sizing, which means the reference still, and I'll pan that to the left and tilt it up a bit. Now we have a better direct comparison between the two tractors. The backgrounds are different because of the house in this shot. So in the RGB parade, they won't match perfectly, but they're pretty close. If I drag left and right on the wipe in the viewer, you can see the RGB Parade update 
to reflect the waveforms for each shot. It's very clear that the midtones in the shot we need to correct are quite a bit higher than the midtones in our reference shot. To correct this shot, we'll use the color bars in the primaries palette. In Resolve 18, click this icon to select color bars. The color bars break out the same lift, gamma, and gain that we see in the primaries wheels. However, they break each of these areas of luminance into the specific red, green, and blue color channels, as well as the luminance channel. So we can directly adjust the primary colors and the luminance in each of these luminance ranges. Let's press Option or Alt F for an enhanced viewer. Okay, now to bring down the midtones of the red, green, and blue channels simultaneously, we can go to the gamma section and bring down the luminance bar. Adjusting luminance with the luminance bar is different than using the master wheel under gamma, either here or in the primaries wheels. I'll show you what I mean. I'll reset this. If using the master wheel, here or in the primaries wheels, it adjusts not just luminance, but the red, green, and blue channels as well. If I drag left, note how all channels are lowering at the same time. So we're adjusting luminance, but we're also affecting saturation. I'll undo that. By adjusting the luminance bar alone, we're only affecting luminance without affecting saturation. Now I can also see that our tires here are not as dark as the tires here. So let's go to the luminance bar in the left section and also pull that down a little bit. Now we still have this color cast to contend with. If we look at the RGB parade on the right hand side for the clip we're adjusting, we want to bring down these greens and blues. One way to do that is to raise the reds in the midtones. So back in the gamma section, I'll raise the reds to even those out. And now we have a good match between these two shots. For the reference sizing, I'll reset that. And then for our input sizing, I'll reset that clip, Option or Alt F to get out of the enhanced viewer. And let's turn off the wipe. And we can also click between those shots. And I'll press Command or Control D to toggle that correction off and on. So it's easy to grab a still and use it as a reference by wiping between the two shots. And the primaries bars, used in conjunction with the RGB parade, allow you to target the specific primary colors and luminance in each luminance range. In the next lesson, we'll see how we can generate a reference for matching a shot manually without even needing to grab a still. If you like this content, consider hitting the subscribe button below. And we'd love to know what you think, so please drop us a comment below. We read all our comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.